first thing, and then I'll get out of the picture here, but if I can just get your name, first and last name, and the correct spelling of it so I have it on tape and I can set audio levels at the same time. So when you're ready. Okay. My name? Yes, please. <clears throat> Takashi Matsui. And the spelling? T-A-K-A-S-H-I M A T S U I. Great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. And to start off with, um, you, now you're a Kibay, right? Isn't that correct? Yeah. And you were, so you were born in the United States? I was born in Oregon. And uh, your, did your mom, your dad immigrated to the United States? Yes. And what, what was he doing in Oregon? Uh, <clears throat> I, I heard they were working uh, on an uh, apple orchard. Mm -hmm. And then um, you were born, and then did, did your mom and dad and you go back to Japan? No, my uh, mom took me back to Japan. Just you, or you was you have a brother, or no? I was uh, first born, mm -hmm. and uh, I was the only one. And she took me to Japan. And now, where, where, what prefecture was your family from? Uh, they were from Fukuoka, in the southern part of Japan. Is is that where you went back to? Was Fukuoka? Yes. And did that? Uh, um, now, you, why, why did they take you back to Japan? Uh, <clears throat> I don't know, but uh, uh, I heard uh, those days it was uh, uh, customary for the <clears throat> uh, pioneer uh, first generation to send the uh, uh, boys back to Japan for education because they thought uh, um, American education was no good. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, <clears throat> they thought that uh, uh, we should learn uh, Japanese language so we can communicate with them later on. I think that was the main reason. Yes. So you're, you're uh Mom and Dad were very traditional Japanese and being Nisei, correct? Yes. Uh, and they um, th they weren't citizens, isn't that right? They weren't allowed to be citizens in the United States. No, uh, they they were not allowed to become a citizen uh, until well, I'm talking about the first generation until I don't know way after the war. Mm. Yeah. Now, in, now how, how old were you when you went back to Japan? Well, I don't remember, but uh, they say I was about three. And how long did you live in Japan? I uh, lived in Japan through high school. So you spent quite a long time there. Uh, about uh, uh, 14, 15 years. I grew up over there. So did you, um, did, did you think, did you feel that you were Japanese or did you feel that you were American after that? Uh, while I was there? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I, I knew I was Japanese, but I also knew that I was born uh, in the United States and that uh, someday I would come back here, yeah. Did people over there, uh, your friends at school, did, was there a difference because, because you were American born? Did, did your friends at school? No. They didn't? They didn't, uh, in fact, a lot of them didn't know that I was born in this country. You, 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 didn't, have an, you didn't have an accent then? No. Because you were so young. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, um, what year did you come back to the United States? Uh, I came back here in 1934. And what did you do then? 
Well, <clears throat> I came back to Seattle because uh, my uncle was here. Uh, by then, uh, both of my parents were in Japan. So I came back here uh, relying on my un uh, uncle and I stayed with them for a little while. Uh, I came back uh, in um, April. Yeah, April. And I stayed with them for a little while. <coughs> and uh, they thought that uh, uh, instead of just uh, staying with them, I should go out to the countryside to work, which I did went out to Bellevue to pick strawberries. Mm -hmm. And uh, later on to uh, Seminar area to pick uh, uh, blackberries and peas. <laughs> so did you, were, what were you doing in, in um, uh, do you remember where you were when Pearl Harbor happened? Pearl Harbor? Yes. Yes, <clears throat> I was, um, Mm, staying with uh, an uh, American family and going to uh, University of Washington. And I was in my uh, senior year. Uh, about to finish my course uh, in business uh, the June of the following year, 1942. But uh, I couldn't do it. <laughs> Army got me. <laughs> do, you re do you remember he how you heard about it, where you were when you heard that it had been bombed, Pearl Harbor? Do I remember? Yeah, do you remember when you, where you yeah. were and when? Yes. I was in, in this uh, uh, American family. Uh, <clears throat> I heard about uh, uh, radio broadcast about 11 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Did the um, uh, what did did you know it was did you did you know that maybe this was going to happen that maybe we were going to? Well, <clears throat> things were uh, getting bad, and um, I don't think anybody expected the Pearl Harbor attack. Uh, we kind of thought that uh, maybe. The war uh, is inevitable, uh, that it's coming, it was coming, uh, but uh, <clears throat> uh, I guess we, nobody knew where and how it gonna, was going to happen. It certainly was a surprise. <laughs> but it, it was a surprise where, but but there weren't, but people did know that we might have trouble. I mean, that the, 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 it was a surprise that it happened at Pearl Harbor, but that we, people in this country, they did know that Japan and, and we were at odds, right? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I think most of the people knew something bad was uh, going to happen. Yeah. yeah, nowadays, you know, for kids in school, and for the majority, I think, of children, when they talk about World War II and Pearl Harbor and the attack, uh, their opinion is, is just that it, it just happened and there wasn't any preamble to it, to where there was a warning or anything. But we, it's, we, our country actually had been sort of battling with J Japan diplomatically for quite a while, haven't we, because of what was going on in China. Is that true that they? Well, <clears throat> we, um, or well, that is I, I knew that the Japanese uh, diplomats, uh, we even knew their names, were uh, working with uh, American uh, uh, foreign department, well, was that a foreign, no, department of? Uh, state. Oh, state department officials like, uh, mm, now I forgot the name. <laughs> uh, diligently in Washington, D.C., and uh, we were hoping uh, they will kind of dissolve the situation, uh, solve the situation. 
but uh, apparently, uh, <clears throat> according to the stories and the movies uh, I've seen, uh, uh, there was a <clears throat> lack of uh, communication uh, between Japanese uh, foreign department and the uh, uh, General Tojo's uh, war cabinet. Mm -hmm. Did the um, was there a, a big change Pearl, on December seventh when you heard about Pearl Harbor in the radio? Was there an immediate change for you here in Seattle? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> that was Sunday. Uh, following day, I uh, went to school and. Uh, a lot of friends of mine came to me and said uh, I had nothing to do with it and that uh, they were still friends of mine and uh, uh, they kind of encouraged me. Uh, no, I didn't um, uh, personally, uh, I didn't feel any inconvenience or uh, anything out of ordinary uh, the following day and um, uh, weeks after. I don't recall anything bad taking place mm -hmm. as far as I was concerned, yes. I understand uh, <clears throat> that wasn't the case. Uh, when I went to school, some of the uh, students uh, said that uh, uh, the regular bus didn't pick them up. Mm. And uh, so they had to wait for the next or next next bus. And uh, then uh, <clears throat> uh, some bad thing happened uh, uh, in a uh, farm area like Auburn, uh, Renton, mm -hmm. uh, places like that. But <clears throat> I didn't, I didn't feel, uh, uh, feel any, anything different. Uh, uh, I think everybody treated me fine. Did, um, did, um, did you graduate from the UW before you went to the military or? Did I what? Did you graduate from the UW? No, I, I couldn't graduate. <clears throat> um, after no, before Pearl Harbor attack, <clears throat> uh, my draft board uh, said that I was subject to draft, and uh, this was before Pearl Harbor. So I said, well, I'm going to school, and uh, that I have one more year to go, so let me finish. And uh, uh, the official said, well, you apply for deferment, which I did, and uh, they gave me three months uh, deferment so I will, so that I could finish or I could attend the winter quarter. Well, uh, then this attack came and uh, there was no more deferment. So I had to forget about the education. <laughs> So you, they drafted you right away then? Uh, not uh, right away, but I, I uh, put things in order so I could be drafted uh, anytime. Um, actually, <coughs> I was drafted uh, uh, the March of 42, following year. Did the... Um now you do have you do have a heavy accent because you were raised in Japan, and your Japanese must be very good. Well, I learned the Japanese language uh, before English. Mm -hmm. so. so when you when you were, how did when you finally were entered the military? What happened? About did they immediately say to you? you're a Japanese speaker and we want to do something special with you or how did that happen? Well, 
no, <clears throat> I was at, uh, I was drafted at uh, uh, Fort Lewis and uh, for about uh, at least 10 days, uh, I didn't do anything except uh, get uh, shots and uh, eat good food. <laughs> and uh, then <clears throat> uh, more and more uh, uh, boys uh, of uh, uh, Japanese uh, descent came. And uh, I think uh, after about 10 days or two weeks, uh, there were about about 14, 15 of us. And uh, they give uh, us an order uh, to uh, go to uh, Arkansas for basic training. And uh, I guess uh, I was, uh, well, I was 25, <clears throat> and they figured I was the oldest, so they put me in charge of these boys. And so we got on the uh, train and went to Arkansas. It was all Japanese Americans? Uh, about 15 of us, yes, went together. So why did they send you to Arkansas to train? I don't know. Because <clears throat> where, where people were being trained here at Fort Lewis, weren't they? I guess so. Uh, some. Some might have uh, gotten the basic training at Fort Lewis. Mm. I don't know why. Uh, why Arkansas? Mm. Yeah. Had you, you had, now that did you take you took a train back to Arkansas? Yeah. What was that like? The train trip back there, going across. Did did you did people hear your accent and look at you differently, or were everybody good? Were, were everybody good well, with? no, we didn't, I don't remember meeting anybody. We were among ourselves uh, in the train. Uh, I don't remember uh, anything about uh, other passengers. Uh, they told us to close the blind, so we closed the blind. That's about all. <laughs> they didn't want everybody to know there was a train load of Japanese <clears throat> going across the country? Or? I, I don't know. I don't know what the, uh, um, <clears throat> the reason was. Maybe because of um, mm, precaution to to avoid uh, like a, a well lit uh, uh, train going mm. uh, might uh, might attract uh, uh, enemy uh, or whatever I, I don't know <clears throat> now when was it that the, uh, the the military intelligence when when did they take you oh how did that happen yeah. <clears throat> well after the basic training uh, Quite a few of us uh, didn't get any assignment. You know, others, uh, uh, Caucasian soldiers were assigned uh, almost every day, but uh, we didn't get any assignment. So <clears throat> we waited, and um, about uh, I think August of. Uh, Forty-two, we were sent to uh, uh, Fort Warren, Wyoming, in uh, uh, Fort Warren, Wyoming, for to be assigned to headquarters company <clears throat> uh, in the army. We used to call it Boo Gang. For doing nothing. <laughs> now, what was that that you called it? Boo Gang. Boo Gang? Yeah. And how did you come up with that name? I don't know. Uh. Uh, uh, 
headquarters company was known as Bu Gang. Mm. <coughs> so every day uh, we were doing odd job, like uh, moving uh, old uh, wooden stove from one end of the warehouse to the other end. The following day, uh, put them back to where they were and all that. And uh, <coughs> one day, in the company uh, day room, uh, I was looking at uh, uh, all kinds of uh, books and uh, uh, brochure, and I don't know who published that, but uh, there was a small uh, brochure uh, uh, on Japanese language. <clears throat> so I was looking at and uh, I saw a lot of uh, errors. So I was talking to my friend, look at how many errors it has. And uh, we were all kind of ridiculing the uh, <coughs> brochure. And I think the first sergeant or somebody, a Caucasian sergeant, overheard what we were saying. Uh, he must have reported. And uh, in about, uh, couple of weeks, I had an order to go to uh, myself, just myself, <coughs> order to go to uh, a place known as Camp Savage in Minnesota. And uh, I didn't know what uh, it was all about, but uh, <coughs> uh, after I uh, got off the a train, <clears throat> small, real small station. The uh, station master said, boy, oh, you're going to Camp Savage. I'll call them. And he called, and somebody <clears throat> came after me. So that's how I knew that uh, there were a whole, a whole bunch of uh, whole bunch of us. <clears throat> and uh, uh, then after I went, uh, the commandant, uh, uh, who was a full colonel, uh, asked me to come into his office. And I uh, went and uh, he talked to me <clears throat> a little bit, but uh, he, he had my background information. And uh, <clears throat> He asked me if I could read uh, certain pages of some kind of a Japanese textbook, and uh, uh, I read, and he, he said, well, what does it say? <clears throat> so I told him what it says in English. He said, well, okay. Uh, <laughs> you are assigned to uh, class A1, and so tomorrow morning you report to A1, and I did. And the class was already going on for three months, June to September, three months already. <clears throat> and I went in there. <clears throat> uh, and then after three months, the uh, school was, uh, the course was over in December. And I graduated with the rest of them. And that's how we got involved in uh, the uh, intelligence service uh, language school. So you were an instructor there, were you? Uh, <clears throat> after the course, uh, we were given furlough, and I went to see my uncle in Idaho. He was in uh, the camp. And uh, after a few days, I went back to the post. And they told me I was to remain with the school and uh, uh, be one of the instructors. Yeah. That's how I began to stay there during the, the war. Your uncle was in Minidoka, was he? Yes, Idaho. Was it just he, or did he, his whole family was there? Or? His whole family. Mm. 
was that hard for you to see that happening? Um, <clears throat> well, I think all of us were kind of resigned to that. There wasn't much uh, anybody could do. It was a government order. Uh, Japan was the enemy. Uh, and everybody was there, so I figured that's the way it's going to be. <laughs> that your mom and dad were in Japan, were they? So was that sort of a hard situation? Had you, had you heard from your mom and dad? No, <clears throat> not until after the war, yeah. After the war, um, or during the war, they won't, uh, the school won't let me go overseas. They, I guess, wanted us to remain to teach and uh, so the war was over, and so I said, now that the war was over, I, can you let me go to Japan or uh, overseas? And uh, then they let me go, uh, 1946, about a year after the war was over. And uh, <clears throat> after I uh, got to, uh, Japan, first thing the Army asked me was uh, whether or not I had uh, relatives in, in Japan. I said, I do. And uh, they said, well, uh, take a two-week furlough and go see them. So I did. That was the first time I uh, saw them and talked to them. Uh, since before the war. In like five years or? Um, no, you see, I uh, <clears throat> left them 1934 and this was 1946. So, oh, so years and yeah, years. Yeah. Did, um, was, were you worried about your parents? Did you? I was wondering if they were all right. Yes, I was concerned. So, do you remember um, <coughs> when you when you finally found them? Do you remember them? What the meeting them again, or do you remember that first time when your mom saw you? Uh, I mean, after the war. Yeah, when you found. <coughs> them. Yeah. Well, sure, I recognized right away. I went to there. Home. Is that is that where you had been when you were living in Japan? Yes. Uh, so did uh, were they surprised? Were you in a uniform? Yes. Were they surprised? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they were very happy to see me. <clears throat> For one thing, I had a uh, duffel bag full of all kinds of goodies. And uh, I give, give all that to them, so they are very happy. <laughs> so were they, are, were they proud of you? I think so. So even the, it was sort of odd to hear, hear your mom and dad were Japanese living in Japan, and then, you come, and then the next time they see you, you're an American serviceman. <clears throat> mm. Well, uh, they told me to come back here, and I did. And, uh, that's the way it happened. Uh, my uh, younger brother <clears throat> uh, didn't have a chance. To, he was born in Seattle, but uh, he uh, didn't have a chance to come over here before the war. Uh, but after uh, he finished uh, high school, in a couple of years, he was uh, uh, conscripted into the Japanese Army, and he didn't come back. He didn't survive the war? No. No. I, uh, <clears throat> he was sent down to New Guinea, and uh, the mother said, uh, first, uh, he was missing in action. And then later, uh, I understood that uh, uh, he was still missing. He couldn't, he couldn't 
they couldn't uh, find his remain. So, uh, <clears throat> well, that happened to a lot of us, you know. Yeah, it's sort of different in here. Your your mom and dad had sons on both sides to worry about. One son was in the mm -hmm. Japanese Army, mm -hmm. and one was in the American Army. Mm -hmm. So that must have been that, sort that of that happened to quite a few families. Mm. Yeah. So that that was a common thing. To uh, I heard of uh, some other uh, person here in the states now. Um, say that uh, his uh, uh, brothers who are in the Japanese army uh, they didn't meet in the front, the front line, but uh, <clears throat> they uh, met uh, uh, in, in Japan after the war was mm. over. Yeah. So your mom and dad uh they, they, I suppose they were equally worried and they're proud of both of you regardless of what side you're on, huh? I think so. Yeah. Uh -huh. did, did you, uh, when you got to your hometown in Japan, I, it was probably big news, I suppose, everybody in town. Was it a small area that your parents lived in, a small city or? Small area, yeah. yeah. So you were probably, it was probably big news in that area when you showed up in town. What if uh, my uh, parents told them, yeah. you know, I, I guess they told them. <laughs> they did lots of people come to see you? Well, I didn't stay very long. I yeah. stayed only a couple of days, yeah. yeah. There wasn't a lot of, um, Japan was, the war really cost Japan dearly. I mean, it was pretty heavily bombed and people were starving, weren't they, at, towards the end? Were In they? big cities, huh? it was um, a situation with much, much worse than the countryside. Our folks were in the countryside. So I guess they didn't have too much trouble finding food. Uh, in fact, they could raise their own food. Mm -hmm. So I think they didn't starve. But in city, it was a different matter. Is where, what city did you go to when you first? Came? Well, uh, first city, I was uh, was in Tokyo, <clears throat> and uh, uh, every night um, we uh, used to see a lot of Japanese uh, lying down on the street uh, near the uh, uh, basement windows because the warm uh, vapor was coming out. They see. Uh, this is a building where we were staying. And so the steam was coming out. So they were all around there. And we used to, it was dark and we used to step on them. Mm. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> mm, go uh, two, three blocks, uh, I don't know which side, but uh, away from the train station, uh, we used to see <clears throat> people living in a, well, not so, uh, it was sort of a cave. Uh, they had uh, mm, a tin roof, mm. uh, and they were <clears throat> shining sh shoes or people go back and forth. Mm. I, I never had my shoes shine by them, but uh, they were doing that. Did uh, Tokyo, y you had seen Tokyo before the war, right? Uh, <clears throat> no, I, <clears throat> I didn't go to Tokyo before the war. Mm. Uh, from the countryside, uh, I took a train to Yokohama to board the ship. Mm -hmm. I didn't go to Tokyo, no. But Tokyo, when you, the Tokyo you saw in 1946, it was pretty well destroyed, wasn't it? No, it wasn't bad. Could you, you could probably stay, 
Could you look for a mile and see nothing but bombed buildings or? <clears throat> yes, from the, uh, either from the train window or, you know, as you drive by Jeep between Tokyo and Yokohama, I used to go back and forth uh, from Yokohama where our uh, war crimes uh, uh, trials were being held <clears throat> and Tokyo where the prisoners were incarcerated. I had to go back and forth on a Jeep and for months, <coughs> maybe, maybe for a couple of years, uh, on both sides of the highway, uh, we could see nothing but uh, concrete chimneys. Everything else was flat. Very <laughs> <Hey>, good. <coughs> and that was true. Uh, <clears throat> where my folks were not the immediate uh, neighbor, but uh, the big uh, steel mill, you know, uh, Yahata steel mill, around there. <clears throat> as far as I could see, it was flat. Nothing. Only the concrete chimney was standing. And there are people trying to live in that, huh? Well, <clears throat> I guess they did the best they, they could. I heard Mr. Doy said that there were lots of children who were orphans that were in Tokyo. They were what? Lots of orphans, children that were well, sure. trying to <clears throat> they, survive. They lost uh, the parents. Uh, maybe the parents... Uh, died in uh, bombing uh, or uh, something happened to them. I, I, I saw orphans too, yes. Now in Yokohama is where the trials were, right? Is that what you, it, now explain why, now you were still in the army, right? Yes. You know, now, what was your duty when you got sent to Japan? <clears throat> uh, I didn't know what my duties were. They just sent me there. And at first, uh, uh, I was assigned to uh, uh, <clears throat> office known as uh, Fundamental Research. And uh, <clears throat> there was... Uh, American uh, PhD uh, doctor somebody <clears throat> and uh, well there were quite a few doctors PhDs <laughs> in that area and uh, <clears throat> this office had to do with uh, uh, custody of uh, precision machines that uh, universities uh, had. And the uh, universities, uh, because it was uh, uh, well, about a year or so uh, after war was over, so universities wanted the machines back for education purpose. <coughs> and our job uh, was to uh, visit uh, various universities to see uh, if they really needed uh, precision machines. And uh, <coughs> uh, uh, we went from uh, Tokyo to all the way up uh, northern part of Japan to see various universities and talk to them. And I think <coughs> eventually the uh, machine tools were released. Uh, that was my first job. And then after <coughs> that was over, um, I was assigned to uh, uh, Ninth Corps, uh, which was uh, situated in northern part of Japan. And uh, they were in charge of uh, among other things, 
processing, processing uh, Japanese coming back from Russia. And so <clears throat> uh, my job was to take charge of uh, <clears throat> about 15, 20 enlisted men to uh, uh, do uh, interrogation or inquiries uh, of our Japanese uh, soldiers, especially officers, coming back from uh, Russian uh, zone. Uh, we did that in <clears throat> northern part of Japan. So were they coming back from, what was the name of the island that? Sakhalin. Sakhalin? Yeah. Is that where they were coming from? Yeah, they were coming back from there, yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> and that was uh, toward the end of 1946. And pretty soon the port in uh, Sakhalin froze and the ship couldn't go in anymore. So we were sent down to southern part of Japan to do the same kind of a thing uh, involving Japanese coming back from China. And uh, we had to open up a new port. So we did that and we stayed there about three, four months. And uh, then once the, uh, uh, the uh, port in northern part of Japan or uh, Sakhalin uh, on froze, uh, we had to go back there again. <laughs> so what, what was it that you were interrogating him for? What did you want to find well, out? Well, <clears throat> uh, we wanted to, the Army, U.S. Army wanted us to find out what uh, these uh, Japanese found out about the Russian uh, Army, I guess, uh, what kind of a weapons they had, uh, who were, uh, or if they knew the name, <clears throat> high-ranking officers, uh, how they lived, and things like that, military uh, information. So we really wanted to find out about the Russians, then, is what we wanted to know. <coughs> you, what you really were trying to do was find out what the Russians were up to. Yeah. Yeah. So then... Um, you you eventually finished interrogating people when, and then you moved on to war crime trials, or how did you? <clears throat> well, then <clears throat> my active duty uh, came to an end, mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> the army wanted me to stay and continue to do this, but uh, I thought I had enough of army life, so I said uh, no, thank you. Uh, they were promising all kinds of things, uh, higher rank and uh, nice quarters to live and all that, but I said no. Uh, in the meantime, <clears throat> uh, friends of ours were already uh, working for war crimes and they needed more people. So they said, uh, uh, come on down to Yokohama, uh, 8th Army Headquarters, <clears throat> and they worked for the war crimes uh, as a civilian, not not the active duty soldier, uh, but as a civilian, and uh, so the pay was better. <laughs> so <clears throat> I took uh, discharge and uh, uh, went to work for war crimes. War crimes defense. Did um, uh, jumping back before we get to that, all these soldiers, these Japanese military that you were interrogating, were they were they glad the war was over? Yeah, yeah, they were very happy to be back. Yeah, the, it was it was the war was pretty terrible on the Japanese. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, now, when working for the defense. Now, you were, was the U.S. government paying you, or? <clears throat> U.S. government. Yeah. Well, the uh, Eighth Army, yeah. And you were, um, uh, 
Now you were working, you were appointed as a, or were you, you were a member of the Defense of Japanese War Criminals. Is that, what was your, what was your position with the Defense? Well, <clears throat> in uh, Eighth Army, uh, there was a <clears throat> judge advocate section. And uh, <clears throat> under that or in that, there was a defense division, war crimes defense division. The prosecution was in Tokyo, and uh, we, the defense uh, people, were in Yokohama. And uh, the, uh <clears throat> there was a major in charge of the defense division. We had lots of uh, civilian lawyers from the United States. We hired um, Japanese lawyers also. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> somebody had to go or do the job in between. Uh, so we were hired as uh, investigators. And uh, our job was to uh, get uh, <clears throat> testimony uh, from witnesses favorable to defense. Uh, we had to go all over Japan to find witnesses. And uh, <clears throat> then <clears throat> the testimony was in English. And we give it, we, uh, they gave that to American lawyers, and they did their defense work. Did um, now th these were these Class A criminals, or were these were was this like Tojo? And no, the <laughs> they were <clears throat> known as B class uh, war criminal. They were perpetrators. Uh, for instance. Um, mm, in the prisoner of war camp uh, in Japan. When the air raid came, uh, they had to evacuate. And <clears throat> there were quite a few uh, American B-29 flyers in there. Some of them were sick. Some of them couldn't walk. They had to <clears throat> evacuate everybody. And one, one guard decided to make it easy for the prisoner. He couldn't walk. And if, you leave, if, you, if he was left there, he would be burnt to death. <clears throat> they couldn't carry everybody, and the fire was on. So <clears throat> he he got the idea maybe uh, it would make it easy for him. So he took his Japanese sword and killed him. It was a merc merciful deed, but. Uh, <clears throat> In the eyes of our uh, American army, that's a crime. So he was tried as a war criminal. criminal. Uh, I mean, that's one example. <clears throat> and uh, others were, um, like uh, as I said, uh, <clears throat> uh, denied uh, medicine or fail to provide medicine, mm, right kind of food, and uh, uh, <clears throat> right kind of treatment, I guess. And uh, then uh, there was a, a detachment uh, of uh, Navy personnel in uh, southern Okinawa, where B-29 flyers were killed uh, the uh, <clears throat> ch 
charge said that uh, uh, the uh, <clears throat> put the V twenty nine flyers uh, tied to a post or something, and. Uh, <clears throat> Mm, officer, naval officer, uh, ordered uh, the enlisted uh, sailors uh, go charge with a bayonet. That was a charge, and that sort of thing. You see, they were not policy makers; they were perpetrators, and all those. Oh, there must have been hundreds of cases like that. So <clears throat> we, we, we were supposed to uh, work in defense of all these criminals. Did you meet these people? Pardon did, me? Did, did, did you talk to these people that were being tried? Yeah. So you actually could sit there like you and I and talk to them? Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> So you would question them for, as part of your job, would you? So you find out what they had to say. And, uh, mm -hmm. the, well, superior order, they said. Oh, the the the, the defendants would say some yeah. order. Uh, yeah. Is there a difference? You, you know, you talked about the man who that he thought he was being merciful by executing the the airman before he burned in the fire. Is is there a difference in how I guess you look at war and being a soldier and responsibility between a Japanese imperial uh, military and a U.S. military man? See what I'm saying? That is there that man who that man who took his sword and and executed that airman was he really truly thinking he was being a merciful person? Mm -hmm. He was. Yeah. So was <clears throat> he? Was he found guilty for that crime? He was found guilty. Yeah. Just like, say, uh, a doctor <clears throat> uh, killing uh, a patient to uh, stop him suffer more, or uh, take the plug out because he's he, he's vegetable. Same kind of a thinking, you know. But for uh, so, the, but I guess the thing is, it, it depends on who, where you're standing. If he was guilty or not, I guess because of our mentality, he would be guilty. Then is that was that hard for uh, when that man was found guilty? Was he surprised that he that he was found guilty? No, he wasn't surprised. Wasn't no, <clears throat> so. Well, because he knew he killed, but uh, he killed not savagely, uh, well, he, he thought he did the uh, American soldier a flyer a favor, mm. so he won't suffer anymore. That, um, it has to do, I guess, with just different countries and the way you, you're raised and you think, I yeah. suppose. So with you being raised as a, you being Kibe and having been raised in Japan, do you see issues from, can you be, can you stand at that man's shoes and see his point of view? I can, I could, I could understand him. So you can understand why. <clears throat> especially during the war time, especially when uh, uh, air raid took place and then they had to evacuate everybody. There, there were too many to evacuate. So were there, um, were there times in, the, in these war crime trials that there were verdicts that you disagreed with or that did you think that it was sort of Western justice and it should have been? <laughs> <coughs> well, that's, uh, uh, you know, uh, the trial was, uh, trials were held after the war. During the peacetime, in a uh, heated uh, courtroom 
where everybody can talk peacefully. It's a different situation. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's hard to understand. Uh, but uh, his wife <coughs> said that the husband did kill. Yeah. What was the verdict in his case? Or what was the, the, the penalty? Uh, the, the verdict was uh, hanging by a neck. So he was executed. And you, you met his widow then? Hmm? You, had, you spoke to his wife? Yes. Uh, During the trial, yeah. Hmm. So was that someone that was hard? Did you... It must have been sort of hard because you were his part of his defense team. So you had actually worked on this case and everything. It was, it was very, very difficult. <laughs> <clears throat> Do you think that it was, um, so you think it's circumstances that he, he hung because we won the war. I mean, is that sort of the thing is that in a, if, if it was someone else judging him, they might have said, oh, we understand. Mm. Uh, does, um, <clears throat> this is something that comes up all the time. And I asked Mr. Uh, Doy this, and uh, because it, it, there's, things in Japan were completely different pre-World War II. And, um, you know, I think it's real hard for people, young people, maybe even young people in Japan, to understand about things like the Code of Bushido. You know what I'm talking about? Because it wasn't that the code for a warrior's code about what they, what uh, an, an imperial military's behavior was supposed to be like. Wasn't that what Bushido was? <laughs> code, of, <coughs> code of a samurai. Uh, is a convenient term. Somebody coined it. Uh, I really don't know what it is. <laughs> oh, see, but you don't know what Bushido is. That what Bushido is supposed to be called of a samurai? That's what it is. Oh, okay. Yeah, Bushi is a samurai. Do is a way, way of samurai or oh. code of a. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know. I think they. Coined the word to say uh, whatever was uh, whatever made sense for them to explain their way of life. Yeah, uh, it wasn't it wasn't um, something that was uh, easily understood uh, by uh, uh, people other than samurai. Uh, years ago, it was all right for samurai to kill anybody if he found justified. Uh, that doesn't make sense. Does a, um, uh, I think, you know, someone we talked to, they had said they, were, they had spoken to some Japanese imperial military and asked about view, uh, viewpoints on things. And, he, and this man's response was, you can never understand because you're not Japanese. Is there some of that? Is there some truth to that? <clears throat> that I can never, never understand what that, the man that you defended that got sentenced to death, that I can never understand his point of view because I'm, I wasn't raised in that time in Japanese. See, and I'm... Mm. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> I think you could be made to understand. I think somebody sh should be able to explain to you logically so that uh, you understand <clears throat> whether you agree or not is something else. And. Uh, when, whenever they say, well, you got to be Japanese to be able to understand, I think they're just uh, uh, escaping. I think they're just uh, making an excuse. Basically, all these things 
must be understood by all people you know, mm -hmm. to me. <laughs> yeah, I understand when you, you talked about this man and, and his view on it, on really putting this airman out of his misery before he burned to death. Uh, it's very understandable, that point of view. You, you know, I understand that. <clears throat> but um, I think that there's a lot of talk, of it, because we've spoken to lots of veterans who were POWs during the war and had fought the Japanese, and and they're always amazed by the ferocity, of the, like in Okinawa, how fierce the fighting was. And that a lot of it was to, it was to the death, where their uh, what what was the name of the castle on Okinawa that they, the last, I can't remember the name of that. There was a castle that was the like the last, last pocket of resistance in Okinawa that the Americans. Uh, Okinawa. Yeah. Last <coughs> pocket of uh, resistance. Yeah. Mm, I don't know what that was. Mm. Well, I, was, I think what I'm trying to get to is that um, it's hard to under, you know, I, I, can, I can understand the, the point of view and the thinking of Japanese military back then, but it was a, very, it was, it was a completely different type of thought in life compared to the United States, the way that your Japanese military mind worked, wasn't it? What I'm saying, that, I, I think so. <clears throat> that I mean that it wasn't that a man who um, there are certain things that in in our viewpoint were excesses and were things that should be tried as war crimes. That the man who did it, that he he felt he was doing his duty, did he? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, if uh, I think if uh, Japanese won the war. And uh, if uh, uh, Japanese uh, uh, flyers were in American prisoner of war camp, and uh, air raid took place, and if American uh, guard uh, shot the man, uh, merciful killing, maybe Japanese will find him not guilty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's sort of the man. The uh, it's the winners make the rules. Is that sort of the? Yeah, I yeah. think so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, this and one more question about this. In um, in the seventies, the fourteen what well, the class A um, war criminals they were policy makers, isn't that right? How many? The Tojo and, and they that group they were all they were policy makers were uh, they? about twenty some odd yeah. yeah. And were there fourteen that were executed, I think. Or wasn't were there fourteen? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Well, in I read it. I was reading that in um, there's a famous temple in Tokyo, which is where the it's the it's the temple is is devote the memorial for the war dead. Do you know what the name of that is? Yeah, Yasukuni Shrine. Okay. And it's in the news all the time because the prime minister of Japan yeah. uh -huh, uh -huh. And, and he and and the Koreans and the Chinese are, are sort of mad at him because <laughs> he went there. <laughs> And let me uh, change tapes first before I ask that. <laughs> 